Hey, it's Ken Scott for the Atlanta Harvest of Magic taking place September 11th through 13th. Uh, we are less than two months away and we are getting super, super excited. And we hope you're going to be able to make it with us. Uh, again, it's the Atlanta Harvest of Magic. Our website is www.atlantaharvestofmagic.com. Again, that's atlantaharvestofmagic.com. Check out the website. Go there and take a look at our talent that we have. Uh, it's going to be a part of our convention this year. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to be joined here in a moment with our friend Rob Zerbrecki. Uh He's just an amazing, amazing talent, and I know you're going to enjoy him. So enjoy the interview. So hey guys, we're joined Rob Zerbrecki. He's going to be part of our Atlanta Harvest in September. And uh, Rob, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Ken. Thanks for having me. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so have you been to Atlanta before performing? I have been there performing, but not as a magician, as a, as a musician. I was there um, 20 years ago with my rock band, uh, Possum Dixon. 20 years, you know, I was intrigued by that. So you, your, your career started out more as a musician first, an actor, before you became a magician? Um, partially. I, first a musician, and then I got into magic, and um, acting was sort of a result of, of doing magic. Great. You know, when I was considering putting this convention back on, you were the top of the list. I thought, you know, I, you are a, such a unique performer. I've seen you at the castle uh, before, and when people ask about what does Rob do, it, it's it's tough to explain what you do, your act. It's it's kind of Cirque du Soleil. You can't explain Cirque du Soleil, and your act is kind of the same way. It's very mystery, kind of funny, but in a weird way. I mean, how would you explain your act? I explain my act is, is, a, is kind of a combination of all these things that I really love doing. I, I basically perform under the guise of a, of a character that I created with my wife uh, over the past you know, 16 years or so. We started in the basement of the Magic Castle. And um, you know, I got into magic and I didn't really have a, a, a voice. You know, kind of like in, in music, I worked really hard and had a band. And, and I, you know, I shared a lot of influences with my other band members. But when I got into magic... I was reinventing myself as a performer, and it just seemed more fun to present magic as kind of a, in my case, kind of a almost creepy, you know, lurch type butler uh, type of character, just because naturally I kind of lean towards a, you know, a, a look that that you know works for that. Right, right. And um, you know, the tricks of the night, finding material that that made sense and. Over a long period of time, I've kind of developed this own, you know, this character in his, his an entire world that he lives in, and it's uh, just a total blast to create, you know, routines and write write for him and his kind of point of view. It, it really is. I'm telling you, it's uh, now. I gotta ask. I think I saw you in the the parlor when I was there. Do you have a particular room you like working better at the castle, like the the palace, the parlor downstairs? You know, I really love working in all of the rooms. Uh, the parlor is the first room that I wanted to work in the Magic Castle. When I started working on an act, it was for that room in that building, in that club. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I've since, uh, um, you know, done the other showrooms, but I, I don't, it really depends. You know, I, after every show, I would say, boy, that was the funnest show I've done in that room. You know, so it's, you're right. You know, I think every room there at the castle, you, you got to, it's, it's a great, great atmosphere. And, uh, but your act uh, does very well there. I guess it just with the mystique of the castle and everything, it goes very well with your with your character that you're doing there. Now you're also uh, on the board now, is that right, of the Magic Castle? Yeah, exactly. I'm on the I'm on the board of trustees. The, the the Academy of Magical Arts has two boards: the board of directors, who make the business decisions, and the board of trustees, who essentially make the creative decisions and the kind of experience that we we try to help. Um, you know. Create the experience for the people that are coming to the club on a on a, on the creative end. Uh, now, when you come to Atlanta, you're going to be doing your your evening show on Friday night. I guess I think you said it's like 45 minutes or so. So, Friday night you're doing your show, and then you'll come back on Saturday and do your lecture. So, your lecture it's tell us about more of your lecture. What we can expect from your lecture? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the lecture is called uh, I call it the Alphabet Talk, uh, and I essentially walk my uh, audience, you know, the, the attendees through the alphabet, um, using, you know, the, the alphabet to kind of explain at least how I put together an act over a long period of time. And that, and that involves things like writing, producing, directing, acting, um, you know, all, to me, all the essentials that you really need to kind of be a better performer and keep, you know, making the act stronger over, over a period of time. Right. Now, do you find it better when they see the show? Like they'll see it Friday night, your actual show. Uh, 
Would that um, would it make more sense to them with your lecture being the next day? Absolutely. I, I don't like lecturing. If if someone hasn't seen me, uh, the sense that I get is, well, why is this? Why are we watching this guy? Why is he important? You know. But I think after you see my magic, after you see my performance, uh, especially with my forty five minute show, you have a really good sense of what I put into my act sure, and sure. and what those details are that I'm talking about. And I I reference my act throughout the lecture, but if you don't see the act, it, it's not the end of the world. It's just I, I prefer to perform and then lecture as opposed to uh, lecture and then uh, perform. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's it's much better. I think it would be great that way. Uh, I think you're also going to be on a little talk with uh, John Rockenbomber and Jay Johnson and Harry Anderson, I believe, on uh, late Friday night as well, so that will be fun. Just more of a, uh, a sit-down chat with, uh, with the guys, so that will be interesting. I can't even tell you how excited I am to be sharing a, a little you know panel talk with those guys. I, I respect and admire each one of those guys for for different reasons, and and I have for a really long time. So it will be a thrill. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see what uh, what I can contribute to that conversation, if if anything. Well, yeah. it'll, it'll be fun for sure. Now, uh, in addition, you're you're having a a workshop on Sunday. It's an ex extra paid event if you want to attend. I think you're gonna. Uh, John uh, Armstrong's having a, a workshop on cards on Thursday, and yours is on Sunday. Yeah, of course. I mean, my, the, the whole point of, of doing the extra talk is to have people come in and really bring material on stage, put things that they've been working on from their act in front of you know myself, and it, sort of talk about motivation behind things, and, and really kind of put extra emphasis on personal point of view uh, you know, theatrical staging, um, all, all kinds of things related to the theater, as well as routining and you know putting things in kind of you know g generally putting acts in order, right. uh, set lists, things like that. So I, I have a I, I tend to have a good eye for looking at other people's material and and giving suggestions that uh, that will be helpful to them and hopefully you know make them look at their work in a in a you know in a deeper way and uh, ultimately make them you know better performers. So this could be a guy who's doing, let's say, uh, close-up work or working doing stage. It could be either one of those guys could could attend and get a lot of benefit, you know, benefit from your from your talkings. A hundred percent. The this the this workshop is created for for magicians of all types, of all ages, of all sizes. Anyone that has a desire to make their act better, uh, I I would suggest to come and and. You know, my the way that I look at magic is is different than a lot of magicians because I came to magic later, but. I come from a performing background of you know about thirty years at this point, so I have a good sense of what works on stage and and what doesn't. And I think that the way that I I think I've got a way of of illustrating those points that maybe other magicians don't. I think I've got a you know a unique take on on um, offering advice, and it's done in a in it's done with love. You know, I don't I'm not doing I don't I don't. Uh, no one's going to go home crying, <laughs> um, or anything like that. It's it's really you know the whole point of it is to make your make your act to improve your act and sort of maybe look at look at the way that you perform your material slightly different. Sure, well, you know you you won stage magician of the year at the Magic Castle for what two years straight. Yeah, I did. I mean that's yeah. a pretty big thing. So I think somebody that can win it two years back to back as stage magician is someone to to sit down and listen to for sure. So uh, we're excited. We'll see you soon. All right, Ken. Thank you.